Okay, welcome back, ENG 460. Last time, what we did is um, we created, a, we took our mux.vhdl file, which is this guy here, and we instantiated. Um, this is how we instantiated. So we instantiated a mux. Let's actually put a comment there. Instantiate a mux. And what we'll do is we'll move that guy down to here, and we'll say instantiate a sign extender. Now we've got several muxes in here, so maybe we ought to call this guy instantiate, uh, how about the ALU source mux, because that kind of tells what goes into the um, second input on the ALU. All right, so we've instantiated those two components. And then what I did is I created a test bench file at the end of the last video. So now I want to test my overall MIPS that consist of a mux and a sign extender. So I'm in the test bench file for MIPS, and again, I'm going to get rid of this 87 type of declaration and replace it. I'm not using a clock here, so I'm going to get rid of that. And this guy is going to, I'm going to change that to entity work dot MIPS. And let's see, um, Hebrew and then port map. And yeah, so that should actually work there, right? Because that's the that's the 93 way of instantiating things as opposed to the default 87 that this pops up. Now I'm not going to use any clocks here, so let's get rid of this guy. Okay. Here's my stimulus process. Now once again, I'm going to do my exact same thing I keep doing. Well, I got this memorized. All right, so we've got that. All right, so there's my stimulus process. Now, what am I going to do to actually stimulate this process? Well, let's see. Um, I want to change these variables to TB for test bench. Okay, these are test bench variables. And the component MIPS has a clock and a reset. Okay? And I map the clock to this clock. Okay? And I map the reset to that reset. All right. Now, nothing's currently going to happen here. Actually, you know what? I should have left that clock process in there. Um, yeah, I'm going to put that guy back in there so we can actually see a clock. Yeah, let's actually put that clock process back in there. This will be a good process or a good thing just to show you how to do that. Okay, this will be clock process. That's the name of the process. And then you have the process keyword. Now, here's your sensitivity list. And if you put stuff in there, it'll only get executed when those variables change. But we don't. We want this to execute all the time, so we we don't uh, put anything in our sensitivity list. And then we do um, end process. All right. And what that means is that process is going to execute over and over and over. Once it finishes, it's just going to keep going. So what I can do here is I can say TB clock set that to a value of zero. And then let's see, what are we going to do? How about to wait for um, clock period divided by 2, okay, and then say TB clock taking on the value of 1, and then we'll do the same thing. Wait for clock period. Um, yeah, typing is not my strong point. Okay, So there is a process that will just oscillate back and forth with TB clock. Okay, but I took out the clock period, didn't I? So yeah, let's put that guy back in there. And let's see, the clock period I think was a constant, wasn't it? Constant clock period time 20 nanoseconds. How about that? All right, so at that point right here, I've got a test bench file that instantiates, um, let's call this guy U1 test right, that'd be it instantiates a MIPS okay but the MIPS is going to instantiate a MUX and a sign extender and then I've got a clock process that's going to generate a clock and then down here in my stimulus I don't really do a whole heck of a lot why don't we just do this why don't we just wait for oh I don't know 400 nanoseconds and then see what happens okay so now we go back over to here kind of make sure everything has got the correct syntax there's my sign extender Here's my MUX. Okay, that one looks good. Okay, let's uh, get the, the MIPS. Okay. Okay. And then um, let's uh, get the test bench. And now let's simulate the test bench. All 
All right, let's kind of do a little real estate management here. Bring this back into here, and there you go. There's your clock, there's your reset, and there's your clock period. But that doesn't really tell me a whole heck of a lot, does it? That's like, okay, big deal. Those are the variables in the test bench. What I'd really like to see is all those variables in the MIPS file. Well, here's your test bench. It instantiates a MIPS right here. The MIPS instantiates um, uh, a MUX, which was U1, and it instantiates a sign extender, which is U2. So what I can do is I can left click here and I can say add to waveform and it adds all those variables in my U1 test. Okay, so now what I have to do is, first of all, the thing you realize is that this clock and this clock are the same one because we pat we connected those through the instantiation. This reset and this reset are the same one. We, we connected those through the instantiation. So I can really get rid of that guy. I can get rid of this guy because it's the same thing as TB up above. I don't really need my clock period. And then um, SE input, SE out, reg2. These are the input to the sign extender, the output of the sign extender, the input to reg2 of our MUX, the MUX control, and the MUX out. Now, what I can do here now is um, I got to rerun the simulation to get some data here. So I go up here and I click on restart, run all, zoom to full view. And there you go. I've got zero, I've got quad zero going in the sign extender, which gives me quad zero, quad zero coming out of the sign extender. Um, I've got uh, that guy going into the first input of the MUX. I've got zero, zero going into the first input of the MUX. And I've got MUX control um, at zero and then MUX out. So everything is zero, but it does work. Now let's come along here and save this. Let's save as, and what we'll do is we'll just do a, MIPS, uh, how about test, wave configuration file. And that way I can load that every time I come into here. Okay. Now at that point, let's go back and change some of the stuff in MIPS. Let's change SE input to maybe be, how about um, a 7 FFF. -F -F. Okay. Okay, SE out will be computed. And what about reg? Uh, let's make reg equal to... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, hexadecimal. And let's see. Yeah, we'll just leave that alone right there. And then um, mux out. Well, it'll compute that. All right, so let's see what happens now. Save this. Make sure all these guys compile. The sign extender. Mux 1, that's good. MIPS, make sure that guy compiles. T test bench, that one compiles. All right, let's just uh, run it again. Now, when I run my test bench again, you know, it goes back to the default, but what I want to do is I want to open that config file that had the variables that I wanted to see. MIPS test. Okay. See how those variables that I set up came back? And now I restart, run it again, zoom to full view, and look what happens here. Here's my clock, here's my reset. The input on the sign extender is 7FFF. Okay, so it's equal to that. Then the uh, output of the sign extender is quad 0 7FF. Okay, that works, right? Because the most significant bit was zero. Reg 2 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mux control is zero. So what's going to be the output? Well, the output's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So at that point, it kind of looks like things are working. Let's bring our, uh, our PDF up here. Yeah, so what I had coming in down to here was 7FFFF, which got converted to quad 0 7FFFF down to the first input. I set reg 2 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The control on this guy was set to 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 came out of that guy. And there you go. We've just implemented a little bit of our um, MIPS processor. All right? So at that point, I think I am going to stop, and we'll see you next time.